in order to write the electron configuration, we have to know what order the electrons fill. It would be super easy if the S's filled, and then the P's filled, and then the D's filled, and then the F's filled. But that's not what happens. Remember that the S's are very uh, low energy orbitals. The F's are very high energy orbitals. The P's have a little bit more energy than the S's. And the D's, they have a higher energy requirement. And then, of course, F has the highest energy requirement. So imagine that you live or that you're going to park in one of those parking garages. So this is my little sample parking garage here. First floor, second floor, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and we'll just stop it there. Now, let's say that the elevator is right here on this side. Now sometimes when you go up to this first level, this particular level might be full, so you have to go on up to the second level. And sometimes you can get really lucky and get a parking place right here so you don't have to walk very far to the elevator. That's kind of a low S energy orbital. Sometimes there will not be any parking spaces close to the elevator, but there might be a parking space right here that's very far away from your elevator. And you're thinking, if I drive up one more floor, I might be able to get a parking space next to the elevator. So yes, there's still some empty spots down here on this parking garage level, but they're far away. And it would take me a whole lot of energy to walk all the way over here to the elevator. So what I'm gonna do is drive up one more level to see if I can just get one of these easy parking spots. And that's kind of what an electron is going to do. It's gonna see if it can fill a lower energy orbital. So what you have to know how to do on a test or just to do any of these kind of problems to write any electron configuration or to do any orbital notation diagram, you have to know the order. So Aufbau principle, Aufbau is a German word and it means to build up. So this is the principle by which the electrons fill the energy levels. So you're not going to be given this on a test. The best thing for you to do to make it easy to remember is in very nice neat rows. I use the arrow diagram. Some people use a snake diagram. It's kind of the same thing. It just goes a little bit different direction, I think. But every single energy level has an S which can hold two electrons. So you go ahead and write 1S2, 2S2, 3S2, 4S2, 5S2, 6S2, and 7S2. Now, beginning with your second energy level, you can fill a P orbital with up to six electrons. So you have 2P6, 3P6, 4P6, 5P6, 6P6, and 7P6. Starting with the third, you can put 10 in a d orbital. So you go 3d10, 4d10, 5d10, 6d10, and 7d10. Okay, actually, the 6d10 here, or excuse me, the 7d10, this is theoretical, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put it down here just for consistency. Okay, then starting with the fourth energy level, you can put 14 
electrons in there, 4F14, 5F14, 6F14, 7F14. Now, the way that you do this, you're going to draw an arrow through very neatly, and as you draw an arrow through, you write it down. So, the first thing to fill is your 1s2, or your 1s orbital. You can put two electrons in there. The second thing to fill is your 2s orbital, and you can put two electrons in that. The next thing to fill is your 2p6, and then your 3s2. So you write 2p6 and 3s2. Up to this point, everything is normal what you'd expect it to be. But here is where we start to see a little bit of a difference. The next thing that fills is 3p6 and then 4s2. Notice that an electron would rather go up one level and sit in, a, in an s orbital as opposed to find itself in a d orbital which requires more energy. So after your 4s2 orbital has been filled, then you'll fill your 3d10, then your 4p6, and then your 5s2. Next, your 4d10, your 5p6, and your 6s2. Next is going to be your 4F14, 5D10, 6P6, and 7S2. So 4F14, 5D10, 6P6, 7S2. Then your 5F14, your 6D10, and 7P6. So 5F14. 6d10, 7p6. Now, this is as far as you will have to go because you're not going to fill anything or be asked to fill anything that's higher than your 7p orbitals. There, if you'll notice your periodic table, these are your orbitals. This is your 4f and this is your 5f. Um, notice that you don't ever get to a 6F, so you can stop right there. Now, if you want to write the electron configuration for something, let's just take a neutral atom of this palladium here with 46 electrons. All you have to do is count, so palladium with 46 electrons, and I'm just going to count 2, 4, 10, 12, 18, 20, 30, 36, 38, 48. Okay? So we're going to cut it off here, but instead of 40, 10, we don't need a total of 48, we only need 46. So We're going to write our electron configuration like this, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, 4d8. So I always want to double check my work here and make sure I have 46 electrons. So 2, 4, 10, 12, 18, 20, 30, 36, 38, 46. This is the electron configuration for palladium.